Hello, this is Deanna Weed. Today I'm going to make an egg and lanolin farmhouse soap. I have my main oils all mixed and warmed up. It's mostly lard with a touch of coconut oil, high oleic sunflower oil, and a little bit of avocado oil. In addition to that, I'm going to be adding some lanolin that I'm warming up right now in a, in a warm water bath. And the other special ingredient are three whole eggs. One whole egg per um, 500 grams or per pound. I have my colorants, ultramarine blue and um, yellow iron oxide, as well as some titanium dioxide. I have 50% uh, solution of sodium hydroxide in water. This is a master batch lye. I don't want to soak today with 50% um, sodium hydroxide, so I've also measured out some extra water in this cup and I'll be adding that as well. And last but not least, I have some fragrance oil, and I'm using Nature's Garden um, green tea. I'll be putting the soap into a log mold, and I'll be doing a, a type of hanger swirl as well. So the thing about using eggs in soap, um, like the three whole eggs that I've got here for today's um, loaf of soap, is that um, you have to make sure that you don't curdle them. If you curdle them, they're going to be... Um, uh, Chunky might have extra um, odors or just not turn, change color potentially. One thing I've learned from reading the America's Test Kitchen articles about um, using eggs and tempering them for things like custards is that there are two aspects of it. Don't have the temperature be too high and also dilute the egg with other liquids before um, actually heating them up. I spritz these whole eggs with my stick blender. It doesn't take much, but what I'm looking for is basically to have the eggs be really well blended. I'm going to strain these eggs into um, my batter, and then I'm going to mix that egg into the oils just to make bring them all to one consistent temperature. Give it a little stick blend. Let's add my lye. So I'm using my extra water to rinse my sodium hydroxide beaker doing three or four little little rinses. And that cleans all of that sodium hydroxide out of that beaker. So at this point, I have all of my ingredients in the fats, except for my fragrance oil. And green tea is a pretty well-behaved fragrance oil in my experience, so I'm going to just add that. Just stir it by hand again. I think people get a little too rambunctious with stick blenders. You can always stick blend more later on, but you can't take it away if you overdo. And because I want to do a little bit more of a complicated um, color pattern here, I really don't want it to be moving along at a fast clip. This soap is emulsified. It's going to stay in a, a mixture long enough for me to measure it out and, and put colorant in it and then get it blended. And I'm not noticing any off scent or unusual things happening with this batter. So I'm going to move my mold over to my work area. Just pour in about a third of the batter. And I'm going to put one each, the color each on top of each other. So the blue, gold, and light blue, and same thing over here. And then I'm going to pour more soap batter in this. Do the same thing, except this time I'm going to put a drop. Uh, drop uh, pour right in the middle of it with the same three colors and then finish it off I'm going to put the rest of the soap batter in main soap batter in and then finish it off with the colors
Go up and down, just, just barely through the top layer of the soap. I don't want to get down too deep. And then I'm going to swirl back and forth. And what this up and down does is it begins to pull the thick soap into long string. It seems to me when I do that that I get a better result in the end. Now I'm going to just swirl it back and forth. Occasionally with this longer uh, mold, you know, it, it usually gels pretty well in the center part, but then the edges can be uh, um, uh, have, give me a partial gel. I'll come back uh, and cut the soap later and show you how it looks inside.